We got my wax and my wax scraper, brushes. You can look closely. You want to get a decent amount of wax on the ski, the base of your skis, which you definitely don't want. Another critical part here is getting the wax off the edges. And now we're going to see little tiny dots of wax appear. Basically. Yeah, I'm going to call that good. What is up? My name is John. I'm going to show you how to wax the ski. The worse the skis are, the less likely you'll be able to damage them waxing. So I recommend getting your worst skis first so you don't damage your good skis. These are my best skis and my only skis. So they're also my worst skis. Now some people like to put some things on these to hold them down. That's a very smart idea, but I don't think it's necessary. I think you can get by without it. It's just a quick and dirty way to wax some skis. Next step. This could get a little bit dirty, so I recommend doing it outside. That's why I got this extension cord here. I'm gonna go hook it up. Next, you gonna wanna get your iron set up. There's probably some specific temperature that you should use for wax, but as long as you don't burn the wax and the wax melts, as long as you're in between those temperature ranges, then you're good to go. So I like to just kind of play it by ear. This is a, just like an iron I got from Goodwill. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You just gotta melt the wax and not burn it. So I'm gonna get this preheating. My biggest word of serious caution during this whole process is be careful of the iron. This is the only thing that can really hurt you here. Um, obviously make sure not to get anything in your eyes, but yeah, just really watch out for the heat of the iron because that definitely can burn you if you touch it through your skin anyway. The ingredients left, we got my wax. It can be whatever wax. Um, this is the cheapest one I could find online. Got my wax scraper. This could really be anything with an edge. Um, I think this is acrylic, probably 3 8 inch. Anything with an edge will really work. You just gotta find something to scrape along the ski. It's easiest if the widest part of the scraper is wider than the widest part of your ski. I'm actually right on the cusp there, but it just makes it easier. You don't have to do as many passes, shorter way to cut, do it. And then it's really nice to have a brush. It's just any standard cleaning brush. You can do this after the scraping. Honestly, I don't really know how much performance this really adds, but I like to do it. It makes it look like there's a little bit of groove in there and it takes off some of the extra wax and so maybe it's a little bit faster. Beginning at the temperature, so I'm just gonna test out how hot this is by putting the wax to it. If I see smoke coming off, then it's way too hot. If I don't see it melting, then it's not hot enough. And I'm not seeing anything right now, so we'll wait a little bit longer on the iron to heat up. So, so another reason I like to do this outside is sometimes the wax may smoke. Just a little bit better to have that ventilation. That way we're not breathing into these fumes. I don't know how bad wax is to breathe, but it can't be good for you. And so now, if you can look closely, there's a drip coming out of this. That looks wet there. So that means the wax is melting. It means our iron's hot enough. So I wouldn't turn it up any more than that because we got what we needed, which is wax melting. And so now what I'm gonna do is just make a nice drip on the ski of the wax. And so for this, you just wanna spread the wax around uh, semi-evenly. Um, don't get a crazy amount on there, but you wanna get a decent amount of wax on the ski. Uh, you're just going to be taking wax off basically from this point onward. So just get a good drip pattern going on there. Get it laid down. And yeah, don't worry about it too much. Just get the wax down. And yeah, the cheaper the wax you buy, the little bit more. Um, you don't have to worry as much about how much wax you're really putting down. So nice to not have to worry about that. I'll do both skis right now. And so I have a little bit of a divot here, and I probably should use like P-Tech or something, but I'm just gonna put a little wax on it for this season and call it good. Like I said, these skis aren't that new anymore, so I don't care too much about how they turn out this season. So I'm getting my wax on here. Okay, once I got a good amount of wax, on the ski, what I'm gonna do is iron the wax flat. And so to do that, I'm basically just gonna put that iron right onto the ski and get all of this wax just really flattened out on the ski itself. And just to give another little angle on that drip, I, got, I could put a little more wax on. So yeah, we're just, we're dripping wax on our ski. Got that nice drip going there. Gonna let it fall onto the ski. Doesn't have to be any particular pattern or anything like that. Just kind of get it down, call it good. And we'll do the same thing on this ski. Again, just getting a good pattern. 
You can see I don't have a crazy amount of wax going on here, but just enough. Um, it's really, I just like to play it by feel. And that's so what we're gonna do next is gonna iron the, the wax flat. So get the iron on here. You don't wanna hang in one place too long because you could melt the base of your skis, which you definitely don't want. And so basically you're just looking at this and you're trying to get it to a point where the wax is melting on top of the ski and it's kind of flattening it out and then covering the whole surface of the ski and sliding into those little grooves that are made into the bottom of the ski just for this purpose. And then so now is when you'll see when you missed a couple spots with wax, but that's okay, that's why we put extra on. Again, don't worry about it too much. Just, we're out here trying to improve just a little bit here. And so be careful holding these down. Um, you obviously don't want to burn your fingertips. This is where some people may argue it's easier to tie down the ski um, bindings, but again, I really don't think it's necessary. You can get by with just holding them down. Saves a step, saves a little time. Makes it easier on you at the end of the day. And so I can change the angle that I'm using this iron at, and that'll help me kind of move the wax around. I'm just trying to get a nice even layer of wax on the ski here, so really just be don't be afraid to play around. It's a little bit more of an art than a science, so just get that nice even spread, keep it coming down. And yeah, actually I'm really happy with how I got the temperature set. Um, I've got a really nice iron. I'm sure you could set a temperature directly in it, and yeah, that'd be easier, but I don't know, I think I paid like under $5 for this iron. The goal of this again is just to get the job done not be too frivolous or too too much frill. If you see a spot that really doesn't have enough wax, you can always come back, rip a little bit more on. Again, more of an art than a science, so don't get too caught up in the processes or anything like that. All right, and I'm pretty happy with how this ski's looking, so I'm gonna swap it so it's a little bit easier to reach with my other ski. And do the same thing. much to worry about here. Okay, great. And so I got both of those skis ready to go. And so what I'm going to do now is unplug my iron. I think I'm done with the ironing step for today. Unless I see, it, I see a spot that I missed and I'll come back and just drop some more wax on it. But again, not a big deal. And so you're basically going to want to let this wax dry until it doesn't feel like it's sticky anymore. So this ski that I just did, it feels like pretty warm and a little bit sticky. And I definitely want it to solidify in the base of the ski, so you can just kind of put your hand to it, see how warm the ski feels. Definitely want to let it cool down. Again, I don't want to throw any specific numbers on this. I really believe that this is more of an art than a science, so just use your best judgment. Basically, you don't want the wax to be sticky when you're working with it. You want it to be nice and firmed up like it was when it was back in the block form. And so since I did this ski first, with my wax application, I'm going to switch that back into the main slot here. So I'm just kind of feeling, and it feels like it's pretty firmed up. I mean, even this deep spot that I went in, I don't really have any, any misgivings that the wax isn't formed. And so what I'm gonna do next is take my wax scraper tool and just lightly brush on this and basically just break down any large chunks of wax that I see on the ski and just kind of get that nice smooth surface. Now for this part, you're gonna see a lot of wax come off. That's totally normal and okay. But again, you don't wanna be too hard on it to the point where all the wax is coming off, obviously. Otherwise, there'd be no point doing any of this. Okay. 
Okay, and then another critical part here is getting the wax off the edges. You want that so you get that nice clean grip on your, I'm assuming, well-tuned edges. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? And so most waxing tools or whatever you end up using to wax, you could probably just fake it by going along the side, but it'll have like a little bit of a notch here in the side of the tool. And what you're gonna do with that is line it up with the edge of the ski and then run it along. And this time we're trying to get all the wax off because we don't want any of that wax on this edge. We want this to be a fine metal surface that can grip into the snow nice. Okay, and again, I'm just going to come back here, just give it a nice little brush over again with the scraping tool. Make sure there's not any large pieces. Uh, feel, free to, feel free to apply a little bit more downforce if you think you need to to get any big bumps or chunks out. Remember, worst, worst case, worst thing that's going to happen after a day of riding, all this wax is probably going to come off anyway, so don't stress about it too much. You can always try again the next time you go ask you. So what we're going to do lastly is with our brush here, go over this wax just real lightly and we're just trying to get a really nice smooth surface finish. I like to go along the grain of the ski, that way I have a little bit of a groove forming up and again this is just like some bathroom spun or bathroom scrub brush. Any sort of scrub brush with a relatively firm bristle should work fine. And now we're going to see little tiny dots of wax appear, basically like dust from the wax. Yeah. That's what you should expect to be seeing here. And then yeah, I can just kind of feel this is forming up a nice new surface. And yeah, I'm gonna call that good actually. It's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna wipe it down so I don't get any wax particles in my car on the way up to the slopes. And um, there you have it. That's how to wax a ski. I'm gonna go finish up this other guy and I'll see you guys out on the snow.